Hey, what's going on, guys? So I have a clip right here that I'll be using to demonstrate Dolly Zoom effect in DaVinci Resolve. And now, as you can see, this is actually a pretty boring clip without a lot of movement, which is actually ideal for this type of work. So with that being said, we're going to first of all convert this clip into a Fusion clip. Now let's take this Fusion clip directly to the Fusion page. So on the Fusion page, uh, what we're going to do first is to bring a Mac control node. As a matter of fact, we are going to bring in two. And then we're going to bring the B spline masking node, which will allow us to create a mask around the coffee cup as well as the saucer itself. But one thing you are going to notice is that around corners like this, which should be straight and not around it, but because we're using B spline masking node, that is uh, kind of the default behavior. Uh, and again, we're going to see a similar situation here, but that's okay. For now, we're just going to finish up the masking and then uh, come back and uh, uh, fix this up quickly. Okay, so now let's just uh, tighten it up a little bit. And then when it comes to corners like uh, this, all we're gonna do is to change it from smooth to linear. And that's it. That, as you can see, uh, will easily fix the problem. So it's nothing major, uh, but uh, yeah, we're just going to keep doing this, uh, make sure that the mask is fitting nicely and then when it comes to corners like these again all we need to do is to change it to a uh, linear and then uh, let's just make sure that this mask fits the rest of this object nicely and then this is pretty much it you guys uh, as far as masking goes so now let's right click the B spline node and then drop it on top of the first Mac control node here. This is going to review a menu and then we're going to select garbage mat. So now as you can see, the mug itself is being cropped out. Now let's connect media in a node to the second Mac control node here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the B spline node and then make sure we select garbage mat. So now as you can see, this second Mac control node is showing the same image as the first one. Okay, so for the first one, we are then going to double click garbage mat here which is going to review the invert option let's make sure we click it that we select that so now as you can see we have the mug itself and then uh, we also have the background here so let's connect this mug uh, to the background uh, to the second uh, mac control node as a uh, foreground now if we look at the finished product here nothing's really changing because we haven't done anything yet but this is the most important foundational work that we need to do for the dolly zoom effect now at this point, what we can start doing is to bring in a transform node for not only the foreground, but also the background here. Now let's go to the foreground transform node. We are going to keyframe the size setting and then let's go to uh, the 40th frame and then we're going to just keyframe again by bringing up the size setting just ever so slightly. Uh, a little bit here is going to make a huge difference. Less is more. Uh, so this is looking pretty good. But one thing you're going to see is that there is the alpha channel being exposed around the mug. So we can fix this by adjusting the pivot point here. So let's just do that. Let's do it for both pivot X and pivot Y. So this is uh, looking uh, way much better now. Now let's go back to the uh, background transform node here. Do the same thing. Let's keyframe the size setting. And then let's go to the 40th frame again. But this time we're going to bring down the size ever so slightly. And now one thing you are going to see that uh, this is going to sort of simulate that, you know, camera pushing in onto the uh, subject. Uh, and then uh, the background is kind of zooming out as a result. So this is looking pretty good, but you are also going to see that alpha channel exposed a little bit around the mug. So we're going to once again adjust the pivot uh, setting here just a, a little bit. Uh, this is going to help us uh, fix that. So at this point, you guys, as you can see that uh, we pretty much have this sort of a dizzy vertical effect uh, going on. So uh, this is uh, this is looking pretty good. OK, so one last problem we need to fix here is the alpha around the edges. And to go about doing that, we're going to come to the edges setting and then change it to duplicate from the default canvas. So now you guys can see that the edges are filled out nicely. And if we go back to the edit page, you guys will see that now we have a dolly zoom effect created in DaVinci Resolve. So this is great and all, but not all footage, not all clips can work with a duplicate edge. So what we're going to do next is to look at another way to go about creating Dolly Zoom effect in DaVinci Resolve by leaving the edges setting at the default canvas. So that's what we're going to look at next. 
Okay, so in the second method here, we are going to start off by bringing in uh, a transform node for both the foreground as well as the background, just like what we did last time. And then uh, we're gonna come to the foreground transform node here, a uh, keyframe the size setting. Now let's go to the 40th frame. Let's just bring up the size a little bit here, ever so slightly. And then we're going to adjust the pivot X and pivot Y so that uh, you know the alpha in the middle is not as exposed. And then we're gonna go to the background transform a node, and then we're going to set a keyframe for size. But we're going to start off here actually by pushing the size setting up ever so slightly. Nothing super drastic, just a little bit there. Uh, that's that's good enough. And then we're gonna go to the 40th frame, and then we're going to just reset the size setting uh, to one. So now, as you guys can see, that uh, we now have a nice uh, dolly zoom uh, effect going on for this clip and without exposing the alpha around uh, the edges. So this is a pretty good start for us. Now, of course, the big problem we're facing now instead is the alpha around the mug and the saucer. Now we could come to the pivot setting here and adjust it a little bit uh, to help with that, but still, you know, we see plenty of alpha uh, channel being exposed around it. And that is something that we cannot avoid. Uh, by just changing pivot. So what we're gonna do is to bring the paint node and place it between the second Mac control and the background transform node here. Uh, before we start anything, let's actually analyze in this uh, footage a little bit here. A lot of these like empty space that you see around the mug and the saucer can be filled, can be mirrored by basically copying the content nearby. And that is exactly what we're gonna do here. And the first technique we're gonna look at is something called copy polyline. So we're going to simply click on that and then uh, let's just uh, start to draw a little bit of a sort of rectangle shape around this area that we wanna work on. And then let's come to the source setting and just to sort of bring it down a little bit uh, towards the mug. And then uh, now, as you can see, this is sort of filled out that empty space nicely using the neighboring clip. And then let's adjust the softness setting a little bit here, push it up ever so slightly so that it blends in better. Now uh, this is looking really good. So we're going to once again deploy the same technique, uh, copy polyline, and we're gonna work on the left side of the mug here. So let's just once again draw a a nice uh, similar shape around it. And then we're going to just push the source clip over to the right uh, towards the mug. And then let's just adjust the softness a little bit there so that it blends with the rest of the clip nicely. Uh, this is looking really good, right? You guys can't even tell this is being patched up. Okay, so now let's uh, once again, use the same technique, call, uh, copy a polyline. We're going to just fix this part of the clip a little bit there. Uh, and we're going to just push the source clip over to the right and then we're going to adjust the softness. Uh, and then uh, I'm also going to adjust this part of the clip a little bit there, the edges. So this is uh, looking pretty good. And we can continue to use this technique for other parts of this footage. So now we're going to just work on the handle area of the mug. Again, very similar thing. We're going to push the source clip over towards the mug and then uh, just adjust the softness setting there uh, for blending. And then uh, we're going to also use the same technique for the bottom right uh, a part of the saucer uh, as well. So as you guys can see that uh, this technique works really well. And honestly, for these areas, you can't even tell that they are being patched up using just a paint node. So uh, it's doing a very good job, but there are still other areas here that uh, we haven't fixed yet. So we are going to use a slightly different technique uh, for those. So what we're gonna do now is to select the stroke setting here, and then we are going to then select clone under apply controls. And then let's uh, bring up the brush controls. We're going to just bring up the softness setting quite a bit here. I'll leave the size the way it is. And then let's first of all, hold on the option key and then select the target area that we wanna clone from. And then uh, once that is done, then we are going to just start to start to brush very lightly over the area that we want to kind of paint over. You guys can see that this is a great technique as well. And it does a very good job kind of cloning from the neighboring content. But there is this one spot here that I don't like. So we're going to once again, hold on option key, select the area that I wanna clone from. And then uh, let's just uh, brush over this uh, spot here. So that looks good. We're going to once again, hold on the option key, select a, a target area we wanna clone from. And then we're going to patch up just this part here. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's just work on the one on top here. 
Now, once again, let's hold down the Option key to select, first of all, the area we want to clone from, and then let's just start to paint over the empty space. And you can always adjust midway, so let's just hold down the Option key again to select a different target area. This all just depends on what works best for your footage. And then for this area over here, we are going to use Copy Polyline uh, once again. And then uh, once we draw out the shape, let's just uh, push the source clip down towards the mug and then uh, we are going to just uh, bring up the softness a little bit there uh, so as you can see this is going to just blending perfectly this is uh, looking flawless all right guys so this is pretty much it we are going to take this back to the edit page and let this effect render and as you guys can see we have now created a dolly zoom effect in the vintage resolve without relying on duplicate edges Okay guys, so I hope this tutorial helps and as always, I will see you next time.